Hello, hello and good morning. Uh, welcome to this fifth edition of Manufacturing in the Age of Experience. My name is Guillaume Vendroux. I'm the CEO of Dermia, uh, the brand in Dassault system that is dedicated to manufacturing and operation. And obviously, I'm, I'm very pleased, very excited to be with you today. Uh, we're going to spend the day talking about manufacturing, trying to understand where manufacturing is going, what are the issues uh, that we need to solve together, what are the trends uh, that we, saw, we see emerging here and there in the world, and at the end of the day, what do we need to do to improve the situation and make this place a better world and more sustainable world to be in. And, and what better place and time to do that, that here this week in Shanghai, uh, at the same time or during one of the most important events for us industrials, the China Industrial International Fair, and obviously in China, which is, uh, and we all know that, one of the most innovative e economy in the world, and I should say the most innovative manufacturing economy in the world. So again, we, we're going to spend some time talking about manufacturing, but this year, this year, what we would like to do is to talk about manufacturing through the prism of sustainability. Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to talk about sustainability? Because this has become the first topic in the industrial world. Um, indeed, as, as the industry renaissance is gaining momentum, uh, triggered by the ability to better share, better improve, better capitalize the knowledge and know-how, um, we, every one of us, has gained new knowledge, new understanding of the challenges ahead and the challenges of the future of the planet and society. And obviously, every one of us are concerned about this, but there is a given population which is extremely sensitive to the topic. And this is the new generation, the workforce of the future. By the way, the workforce of the future will soon become the clients of the future. And that has positioned sustainability as one of the key business imperatives in the industrial world, to the point that uh, actually the way we look at companies have changed. We don't look at them only with profit. We look at them with the new skills of things. We call that the three Ps. People, planet, profit. People, how social, socially responsible a company is. Planet, how environment, environmentally, oh, you understand me, compatible, uh, um, or responsible a company is. And profit, obviously, how, how much profit or how profitable they are. And so that really has positioned sustainability as a game changer in our whole society. And you can see that because everybody is taking care of, of, of uh, sustainability. United Nations, you know, the world governance, is trying to promote the adoptions of sustainability or sustainable development goals in order to drive a roadmap or decide on the roadmap that the world all together would follow. Invest investment funds have... Uh, um, change their policy about uh, where they want to put their money. They are looking at the 3P scales and they are choosing companies which indeed perform well, not only on profit, but on the two other P's as well. And as far as companies are concerned, I mean, we all hear every day uh, new programs on uh, greener product, greener operation, that all those big companies, and you see some of the names behind me, are, uh, are promoting in order to you know, be seen and be understood as being um, sustainable. So really, sustainability is at the top of the agenda. Video, please. Okay, so now 
you know, this is a question for us industrials or manufacturing manufacturers of the world. What do we need to do to become sustainable, to contribute to uh, solving uh, that uh, significant issue? Uh, what does that mean for us to become sustainable manufacturers? We uh, at Dassault System believe that to become a sustainable manufacturers, we need to work on three pillars, mirroring the three P's, people, planet, profit, that we uh, mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, the first pillar, we call it workforce of the future. I've talked about the new generations of, of, uh, uh, of, of young people coming in in our companies. I mean, we need to foster that new generation and, and make our workplace a, a place where it's good to work and live. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, at the top of the list of that is to make our place safe, physically safe, because for manufacturers, this is one of the most important topics. I mean, you don't go to work to the factory to get hurt. But it, it's much, much more than that. Uh, our, our teams, our, our, the member of our teams needs to, be, to feel that they belong somewhere, right? They need to feel that they belong to a team to which they can uh, contribute and with which th they can collaborate. And, and this collaboration will be the way to indeed improve uh, the knowledge, better share that knowledge, better collaborate around the knowledge. And, and through that collaboration around knowledge and know-how, obviously company will gain competitive advantage because we believe that competitive advantage to tomorrow will be based on the knowledge and know-how that company can gather. But not only, through this accumulated knowledge and know-how, the, the team members, uh, our employees, they, they will be able to grow in our companies. They will be able to reveal themselves and reveal to their full potential. And this is what we need to do, to uh, promote our teams, to make them more autonomous, to make them more engaged, more committed. And we all know that this is a key element in having an efficient manufacturing operation and obviously an efficient, sustainable manufacturing operations. That's the first pillar, workforce of the future. You know, second pillar relates to planet. Obviously, if we manufacturers uh, want to uh, be sustainable, we have to minimize as much as possible the toll that we take on, on our environment. Uh, th there is this weird perception that somehow manufacturing and environmental are you know, antagonistic. And, and I think this is a very wrong idea. Because for us all, we know that good manufacturing is lean manufacturing. And we all know as well that lean manufacturing is about getting rid of waste. You know, the famous mudas, for those of you who are familiar with lean manufacturing. The seven mudas, remember, okay? Transportation, you know, remove or eliminate every undue transportation, uh, any undue or unnecessary inventories, um, any un unnecessary movements, any understand, uh, unnecessary weightings, uh, remove overproduction, remove overprocessing, and finally remove defects. Well, if you do all that, for sure, you're going to be sustainable. If you limit transportation, if you remi uh, remove uh, overproduction, uh, you know, your footprint on or your foot CO2 footprint will reduce because your energy consumption will reduce. If you l limit scrap, your raw material consumption will reduce, right? So it's obvious that lean manufacturing and sustainability goes together. So now the question is, how do we remove all those wastes? How can we be efficient in finding the way forward? Well, again, let's go back to Manufacturing 101. This is fairly simple. You all know the trick. We look at our operations. We slide them into steps. We look at every step. We optimize every step of those operations. We sequence them right. Okay? And this is the way you get efficiency and sustainability. And that's the reason why the second pillar deals with global operation optimization, the way to be uh, more sustainable um, from the environmental side. Third pillar we need to talk about um, is profit, because, you know, if only for that, we need to finance those, those long-term sustainabil sustainability policy. In the age of experience, uh, the profitability uh, it relates to the ability to properly answer the market, right? It's a very fast-moving market, very fast-changing market with products that are more and more complex. To do this, agility and speed are of the essence. And so here we link profitability to the ability to optimize and coordinate all the value streams, right? From product engineering or product design, or I should say experience design, to experience delivery, um, to maintenance or services. 
Okay? And at the same time, we need to coordinate all the value actors from manufacturers, engineering, service providers. Okay, this is the way we're going to maximize the value creation. Okay, and this is, we're going to do it streamlining energy and resources for a better bottom line. Value network orchestration, our ability to manage the value stream and the value actors. This is the third pillar of sustainability, and this is the one where the profit com will come. Workforce of the future, global operation um, optimization, value network orchestration. There is no planet B. Therefore, sustainable manufacturing is not an option. And so now you understand why we picked that, that topic for today's uh, sessions together, because we really believe this is the topic that we need to address. And so in the rest of the day, uh, we will try to show you how the 3D experience platforms, 3D experience twins, are indeed helping us transforming manufacturing for the better around the three pillars that I just mentioned. Workforce of the future, global operation optimization, and value network orchestration. So, how are we going to do that? Let's, let's have a look at the agenda. Um, the, the day will be split into basically three main parts. First chapter, it's about opening up, being inspired, and we have four keynote speakers with us that will give us new perspective on sustainability in manufacturing. We will start uh, with Mr. Kay Wong, Managing Director, Manufacturing Practice, Accenture China, who will give us some insights and proof points about you know, sustainable manufacturing and how it becomes a reality all across the globe. Um, he will be followed by Michael Larson, ABB Vice President, Head of Robot Systems, which will be sharing with us his view of the future of uh, automation, automation in the age of experience. Um, and then we'll be very happy to have uh, two customers and partners of ours with us that will give us a, a bit the client perspective. The, four, the first one being uh, Huawei with Mr. Mark Chen, Vice President of Global Partner Business Department, Cloud BU Marketing and Sales, um, who will let us know about their view, Huawei view, about sustainable innovation. And we will conclude that section um, with uh, SATS uh, and Albert Pozzo, which is Chief Digital Officer. Um, SATS has been uh, engaging in a journey of digital transformation around the 3D experience platform, and Mr. Pozzo will share um, the, the, this journey and, and the key points about it. Um, that's, that will be the first part of the day. The second part of the day uh, will be actions. Uh, we want you to experience firsthand, hands-on, uh, the value that the 3D experience uh, can provide. And so uh, we will ask you to stand up. We will, we will divide you into small groups, eight groups, and you will go around uh, eight pods that will reveal to you, or, we, or so we believe, the value that the 3D experience platform can provide in addressing some of the challenges ahead. Right? Um, and so hopefully this hands-on experience will, will help you uh, understand you know, the way forward. And, and finally, um, and that will be the third part of the day, we we'll last the new generation. We cannot talk about sustainable manufacturing without projecting ourselves in the future and therefore ask the new generation to, uh, to stop by and tell us what they think. So we invited here 20 bright students coming from the best university in the world, and we asked them for the last two days, starting Monday, uh, to, uh, to think about, you know, what does it mean for them, sustainable manufacturing, and what would be their views and their ideas. So they will present that to you at the end of the afternoon, and, and we will ask you to vote for the project you seem, you seem to prefer. So, um, and finally, I, I should not forget that, finally, uh, Bruno Lachag, uh, Dassault System Senior Executive Vice President, uh, will come on stage to wrap up the day. So a very busy and a hopefully exciting day for you. Uh, we are about ready to start, but before we do, uh, we want that day to be as interactive as possible. Uh, and that's the reason why, like last year, uh, we, we, we tried to uh, limit the number of people here because we really want that this experience of interaction be great. Um, and so 
please, you know, during the day, you will meet a lot of our teams. Don't hesitate to ask any question, but to further promote collaborations, what we have done is we have created on the 3D Experience platform a collaborative space. Um, and you see that behind me. Uh, you can connect to that um, uh, collaborative space if you have not done so by, by scanning the QR code here and entering your password and, and email. And from that point on, uh, you will have access to the community which you see behind me or on the screen on the side. And you will be able to, you know, provide content, ask questions. And actually, um, feel free to ask questions. We will have four speakers in the next few minutes. And, and if you have questions to ask them, there will be a, a time slot just after the speech so that I can uh, pick up uh, your, uh, your questions and ask uh, the speakers. So um, I think we are ready. So I, I suggest we start. We start with this first session. Sit tight, comfortable in your chair. Open up your minds. You're going to have great ideas and great speakers trying to you know, give us perspective on the future.